So when it comes to triangulation, the best way to uh, handle it is to not be involved. Like, so that literally means you have to set boundaries around like who is doing the triangulation or like um, whether it's siblings, whether it's your mom, your dad, et cetera, because it's a way to control the dynamic. It's a way to keep you confused. It's just back and forth and the, nothing ever gets resolved. And when it comes to triangulation, you know, a lot of narcissistic mothers tend to lie, tend to withhold information, tend to make you responsible for the other sibling, et cetera. So nothing will ever get resolved in general when it comes even outside of family dynamics like you want to avoid that triangulation because it's not usually doesn't resolve um the root cause or the root issue and when it comes to a family dynamic a narcissistic family system it's not really about resolving anything it's just about control and keeping everybody on edge and confused and that's the point because that's how the mother narcissistic parent keeps the power Triangulation can also be called divide and conquer. It's a way for your narcissistic mother to gain allies in the family system um, and to keep you, the daughter, in the wrong or to keep you confused or to keep you feeling bad about yourself. And it could look like pitting siblings against each other. Many of you may not have relationships with your siblings or you have rocky relationships with your siblings uh, or you're starting to get to know your sibling. And this is exactly why they tend to do this. It's not you guys or your siblings per se, it's the parents and the dynamic that they created. And a lot of siblings also don't even talk to each other because of this, you know, it's, it's messed up. Understanding it can help if you ever want to reestablish a relationship with a sibling or not, or you could just understand from afar. And when it comes to sisters, it might be a little bit worse because it might create more of a distrust when it comes to women too, because not only is your mother untrustworthy, but now your sister is untrustworthy. So it could create this distrust in other women in general, like outside of your family dynamic. The sisters tend to be given different roles and pinned against each other so that they don't have that relationship. They tend to just create chaos and destroy relationships between siblings and other family members to triangulation. If you don't get involved in triangulation, then you're breaking the cycle. Obviously, like the first, the most simple thing is not engage in it, you know, like do not participate in discussions that involve like gossip, negativity um, about a sibling. So if your mother sets like a um, start talking, there's so many ways that they could do this. They could say like, oh, your sibling said this about you. Like, what do you think about it? And then they could take what you said and twist it to your sibling and then be like, oh, yeah, I was talking to your sister and she said you're stupid for doing this when you really didn't say that. So that's one way that they could do it. Another way is like, can you talk to your sibling about this? Because they did this and the other. Can you talk to them for me? Another way they can do this is like, so what do you think about your sibling and doing this, that, and the other? Or like your sibling's talking about this and they need help and this, that, and the other. And then you could give advice or you would want to give advice. And then she goes and takes your advice and you say that's hers. And then maybe she makes you look bad in front of the sibling. So it's like triangulation with the narcissistic mother is never is never good. So you don't want to engage. Here are some examples that you could use. Stop telling me about my sibling. Unless it's coming directly from them, I don't want to hear it. I am not going to discuss this about when it comes to my sibling. I'm just going to go talk to them. You know, if she says something like, oh, your sibling said this, like, what do you think about that? I don't know, mom. I'm just going to go talk to them. I'm not going to tell you. If they start talking about a sibling, and I'm saying sibling because the question was geared towards siblings, but it could be any family member. If you want to go more like, I don't want to talk about my sibling. Let's talk about this. So that'll kind of give you a now. It's like, okay, let's talk about this instead. I need you to stop telling me about my sibling, what they did or didn't do. Go talk to them. Because sometimes they'll come and be like, can you believe your sibling did this? Blah, blah, blah. And then they try to get you as an ally. And then you're like, yeah, I can't believe it. And then she goes and tells that other sibling, your sister said this. See, that's why she agrees with me. You're being stupid, you know? So. Those are the types of things that they do. And if you want to be more like, I appreciate your concerns, mom, and the relationship I have with sister, sibling, uh, but I need you to respect my boundaries. I want to engage in conversations that involve gossip or negativity about her. If you have any issues, let's address it directly. And like I said, if they continue to do it, you just repeat the same thing over and over and over. They may or may not back off, but you could also add more like a consequence if they continue or like um, what's going to happen if they continue. So it could be something like, you know, mom, like I've told you not to discuss my sister with me and you keep doing it. I've told you three times already. So anytime you ask me that same question anymore now, I'm just going to pretend I don't hear you. 
So this isn't the silent treatment. You're just letting her know what you're going to do, what action you're going to take, because you've already had the discussion three times already. And clearly she's not open or willing. So now you got to set like a consequence. If this continues, mom, if this, that, if this, that, and the other, this is what's going to happen. This is what I'm going to do. And that's it. And then you don't have to continue trying to justify. You don't have to continue whatever, because now you know what you're going to do. Oh, she asked me again. I'm just, I'm not going to say anything. So that is just adding like an if only at the end. They continue. They pin each sibling against each other because they cannot have siblings like being allies together. So when it comes to a relationship with a sibling, a family member, you are doing the healing right now, right? Your sibling may not. So when it comes to the relationship with your sibling, it can be superficial. It can be close. It could be strained. There is a spectrum. So you have the mom aspect of like, I'm not going to talk to you about my sibling. And also understand that the reason why you may not have a close relationship with your sibling is because it was caused by the narcissistic parent. And if your sibling is not doing the work, then you might not want to talk about mom. You might not want to try to work something out like because you could be you, you could want to have that relationship with your sibling but if they're still stuck in the dynamic it's still triangulation and they're still going to be doing the same stuff that with the narcissistic mother so you might also have to set boundaries with your sibling and tell them like i'm not going to discuss mom with you when we're together we're not going to talk about mom i know that you're stressed out i know that mom's doing all these things to you but like Unfortunately, that's not something that I want to be involved in right now, but I'm doing this work right now. Maybe you're interested in it. Maybe you'd like to do some of this work with me and they could say no. Some of this work too is grieving the relationship with your sibling, with your family member. So if your sibling is not doing the work, you will have to see how much you're willing to share with them. Um, and you might have a superficial relationship if you're okay with that um, or set a boundary with them. I love our relationship, but I don't want to talk about mom. So don't bring her up because I want to engage. If you have some tension with your sibling, you know, I've noticed there's some stress or tension between us and I want to understand your perspective. If you want to have that discussion about mom, it's completely up to you. You don't have to. Can we talk openly and honestly without involving mom? Because sometimes siblings will tend to involve parents. Well, you know, mom said this, that, and the other. It's like, okay, we could talk about this, but let's not talk about her. Let's talk about how you're feeling about this. And that's a boundary. You're like, okay, I'm not going to talk or involve mom. You could point out like when you talk about mom, if it gets brought up, you know, when we talk about mom or when you bring up mom, it just like stresses us out, creates this tension. And I don't want us to continue to have this problem. So like, maybe we shouldn't talk about mom. Maybe we should talk about what's really going on with you and with me, and then see if we could establish a closer relationship with, with each other. So you also want to end the triangulation with mom, but also with siblings, because you will stay stuck in the loop if you also do it with the sibling. So that's the way that you could address triangulation with the sibling, depending on where you're at. They might not be ready. You might just have to do the boundaries that like you did with mom. And if they are ready, then having like more of an open discussion, then that's awesome.